we've reached the end of unit three. In this unit, we were really focusing on our semantics and meaning and truth to make it so that we could move English sentences into logical sentences. And that's a really important skill. Because remember, we introduced this unit with a problem. You know, how do we take things that are really complicated and not sort of stated in a very sort of logical, straightforward way and make sense of them in terms of their, uh, in terms of their logical connectives? And logical connectives are important because then we can make sense of arguments in terms of truth. And that's a great skill so that we can know if arguments are valid, which is, of course, the gold standard of arguments. So symbolization allows us to do this because then we can uh, take our statements or arguments or whatever and use these truth tables to provide meaning. Now there is a surprising result here, which is that almost every statement uh, that, we, that we read or say or look at can be understood purely in terms of their logical connectives. And of course we focused on English as our natural language, but this isn't unique to English. This actually applies to all languages, which is a really neat fact about logic. It has this sort of like universal application. So I say at the top, though, that almost every statement can be understood in terms of logical connectives. And so why almost? Well, I sort of previewed this a little bit uh, when we looked at restrictive clauses. How do we actually symbolize and make sense of restrictive clauses? And I said we don't really have all the tools that we want in order to do this. And it turns out that this is true. Our system isn't quite powerful enough, and it has some glaring weaknesses that we're going to try and fix moving forward. So here's an example of a weakness of our system. And I'm calling this the problem of logical equivalence. So we know that these uh, two things are logically equivalent. If not one, then the other is logically equivalent to just saying or. Uh, we actually proved that in a previous video in this unit. And the question is, how did we prove it? Well, we actually proved it using a truth table. We just did a truth table next to them, and we realized under every TVA that they had the exact same uh, truth value, which means that they were logically equivalent. But I haven't actually proven this in general. So what about this statement? You should see that it has the same logical form as the one in, on, on the top left. However, can I say that I know that they are logically equivalent in virtue of the fact that the top left one is logically equivalent? And the answer is no, you know, they're different. There's another connective there, et cetera, et cetera. So no problem. How would I prove that they're logically equivalent? Because they certainly look like it. I would just do another truth table. Okay, well, what about this statement? How do I know that these are logically equivalent? And you can see the problem. If I have to do a truth table for every single time something looks like it's logically equivalent, we're going to run into the huge problem that this is just impossible in practice to actually do. Especially once we start having a lot of atomic letters, we know that the truth table will just explode to an unmanageable size. So this is a limitation of our system right now. We're sort of trapped in truth in virtue of truth tables. So what we need to do is we need to develop some sort of more powerful system, a powerful system of actually uh, proving that things have certain logical properties to them. And this system, we're going to get away from truth tables, and we're actually just going to focus purely on things about syntax and grammar and what rules that we can apply that preserve truth. And this is essentially a, a purely, purely syntactical manipulation apparatus. And this will take us to our next unit, which is derivations.